Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as my website at pippinings.com. So this is the first video in a series of multiple videos about me installing solar panels on my RV roof. You can watch supplemental videos about solar basics on my RV solar living playlist on my YouTube channel. So my first step in this big long process is building a mount for the solar panels on my roof and then getting the panels up there. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay my lower track down and I'm choosing to place it where I can have two fully long strips of angle iron and it's got to be a little bit longer than my four panels are wide and that's because where the beams are on my roof is about 11 feet so I've cut these to just a little bit over 11 feet and uh, I'll have ample space but that might be a good thing because then I'll have spaces between the panels so you know when I'm driving down the road it's not like one big sail up top there's going to be holes and gaps in between to uh, take away some of that wind resistance so the first thing I need to do to get these bolted into place is I'm finding exactly where my beams are. And some of the parts on the roof, I can actually see the beam through the roofing. I, I can see just a teeny bit of a, a bump up and then down. And the, you know, the dirt kind of collects in there, so it kind of makes it a little more easy to see. But that's not the most reliable way. So instead, I'm taking this super strong magnet, but when it hits a beam, it suddenly brings it down. So that's how I'm finding exactly where the beams are that I'm going to need to drill into. And I'm just using a regular ballpoint pen to draw. You can see back here too that there's not a perfect amount of space. And I'm going to have to cut out a little bit of this area so that this can lay perfectly parallel. You'll notice too that I'm choosing to not make it the full width of the panel and on the top instead of having it hold the panel inside here I'm going to place all the panels on the flat side of the angle iron and then just bolt them in. It's recommended in the instructions that they be bolted there's like different holes on the solar panel and it's recommended to use the ones that are just a little bit in from the outside anyway so that works perfect. It also makes it easier because before when I was considering doing the full length, I had to put like one of the beams out here because I didn't want to uh, have to cut it to go over this. And um, then because this part of the roof is like two inches lower, I was going to have to like do a bunch of uh, comparing and stuff like that to try to make it equal. So I'm happy that I thought about doing it, laying the angle iron this way versus kind of having it as a little frame to hold it this way. So now that I know exactly where I'm going to be laying my first track, I got this, which is called a turnabond, and it's uh, for repairing rubber roofs on RVs. And um, I'm going to put it underneath my tracks because I just suspect that the angle iron will just kind of vibrate a little bit on the roof and I don't want it to wear any thin spots or holes. So I'm kind of like um, just preparing for that and putting a little bit of reinforcement down. By the way, I never get anything that doesn't specifically call out an EPDM rubber roof. There's different kinds of rubber roofs. You could have a TPO, EPDM, and then there's even subcategories in those. So don't put anything on your rubber roof if you aren't sure that it's not going to make your rubber roof bubble and balloon and come unglued and or wear holes or anything like that. So anyway, this one is definitely for EPDM roofs as well as the TPO ones. So I'm going to just lie a strip of it down. And uh, before you put this down, I've completely cleaned. I cleaned the roof before I started. And then now that I know the very specific inch and a half by eight foot line, I double scrubbed along that. So I'm kind of waiting for that to dry. I'm gonna lay this down and uh, then I'll be ready to start drilling the screws in. So 
I'm gonna start my first hole here in the middle, just because I've got these bunch of obstacles right here, and that'll kind of hold it down, because I, I don't really have any uh, give in this section, so I wanna make sure this one's pretty solid. I'm gonna start by drilling a pilot hole, and then I've got my uh, screw for it, and I'm definitely going to use some caulking to put on the screw and screw it down into the hole with a bunch of caulking in it. And then I'll try to do some caulking on top too and see if I can just push some more in there when I'm done. So I ended up doing two here, because this first one I put in, this was the first one of all of them, it didn't seem to go through metal after the aluminum. So I put another one in at the very end, and that one didn't really seem to connect very well. But these ones did. I got one there, and then I put four here, because uh, I think this was my first one. It didn't feel very strong. Well, I can't remember which one was first. But so I put another one in and it definitely hit the metal below. By the way, I didn't put these in all the way. You can see it's sticking out a little bit. Because I want to, uh, you know, it's, the roof isn't flat. So if you look at the end, I want it to stick up a little bit and be able to flex this way until I'm done build. So I got gross stuff on my fingers. Until I'm done building it. And then you can see that I actually used this old paint stick as a shim to kind of lift up the back while I was drilling it. And right now it's really tight in there, but um, I don't really want it up here permanently, but it can hang out here for now. See, there's a little gap on the back because this is where the roof goes down and then it's tighter up front. Now that I got the base on, I'm ready to build the frame upward. And according to my design, I've got four legs and then a bunch of different braces. I used 45 degree right triangles on my corner braces because 45 degree angles make the strongest triangles. Once you cut your first one, you can use it as a stencil for the others. Keep in mind though, half of them are going to be mirror images of each other, so don't cut a bunch out after you've made one stencil. So let's go over the materials that I'm using for the frame. The frame itself is extruded aluminum or aluminum angle iron, and it's extruded like an L or a square L. The sides are one and a half inch thick, sorry, they're one and a half inch wide and then the thickness is an eighth of an inch and for the fasteners there's three parts to the fasteners there's the bolts the nuts and then the washers okay so some basic things when you go into like Home Depot or Lowe's or something place like that and you want to get bolts metal ones you are going to find there's a few choices you'll have regular zinc plated and they'll say, you know, zinc on them. Then you will have galvanized, and then you have stainless steel. So the zinc coated hardware is the cheapest, and it's the least able to withstand outdoor corrosion and uh, environments. Next you have galvanized, which is steel also coated in zinc, but it's just dipped in like a hot liquid you know like zinc stuff so it is also coated in zinc just like the zinc coated one but it's a special application so it lasts a little bit longer and it is also a little bit more expensive then you have the option of stainless steel and this one is going to definitely be the most expensive by far as well as the best option for applications outside like on my solar panel mount so I wanted to do stainless steel everything, but it's, you know, it gets pretty spendy. So I kind of went for which had the, the packet numbers that matched, like uh, 
I think the galvanized washers, if I wanted to buy them in stainless steel, I had to buy them individually. Whereas if I got it in galvanized, it came in packs of uh, like 50 or something, 25. And it was kind of cheaper to get them in the bulk quantity. So I ended up getting zinc coated nuts and uh, galvanized washers and then stainless steel bolts. I really wanted stainless steel bolts and so those are the most. Okay, next we want to talk about the nuts that you're going to use on the back of your bolts. If you just use uh, regular nuts, you know, just metal, especially on an RV roof, you know, when you're driving down the road, it's going to be vibrating and those nuts will eventually loosen themselves up. And you don't really want that because then your whole panel starts loosening up and it can fall apart. So there's a couple of different options. You can get the nuts like this that have a little bit of nylon on the inside and that will really uh, tighten the nuts it, with the nylon kind of sticking it together on the inside. Uh, if you don't use that, you can also use, there's I think there's like a couple different kind of liquids that you know you dot, after you screw it on, you dot that on and that will kind of bond the nut to the end of the bolt, uh, doing the same sort of thing. Those may be a little more permanent, so if you know you want to keep it a, a little less permanent and maybe be able to change your frame over time, uh, the vinyl is a good option. So that's what I ended up getting. And the washers, uh, usually you put the washer on the side of the bolt that has the nut. And uh, I chose to do it on both sides. What the washer does is it distributes the pressure. The washer is also used uh, so that the when the nut screws on to the bolt, the bolt is sitting against a flat surface. Uh, otherwise, if it's not against a flat surface and you cut the hole, for example, I cut the holes in my aluminum, there may be some debris remaining that makes it not a smooth surface where the bolt will go on, or sorry, where the, where the nut will attach. Plus, it distributes the pressure. So anyway, I got washers for uh, the side with the nut and I went overboard and I got washers for the other side as well that is going to be between the head of the bolt and the front side, the face side of the aluminum. I used my seam clamps again to hold the main part of the mount to the already attached tracks to help hold it up while I drilled the new bolt holes. You'll get a lot of drill debris, which is sharp metal pieces. If you step on these or rub something over them, these could end up cutting little holes into your rubber roof and therefore causing leaks. So make sure to sweep away after each new hole that you drill. So I've just about finished my frame. I have not yet put the bottom cross pieces on. And I do want to add, before I do the end cross pieces, I've got little feetsy feets. So I got my solar panels from Grape Solar. They are out of Eugene, Oregon, so that's really close to home. Their panels come with these little feet, little Z feet. And so I'm gonna put my Z feet on here uh, before I finish the frame. Now, I'm not going to put these end X pieces on until I've got my feet on and I've, you know, setting a solar panel down and I know that I've got it about right. Because at this point I can still move my frame a little bit in and out. And so once I know that I've got the perfect, uh, you know, perfect dimensions or angles and stuff, then I will put the final cross pieces on the end. Okay, so a couple things I want to go over. You might be wondering, well, 
if the solar panels come with feet, why am I building a frame? And number two, why am I building a frame that's so tall? It's 10 inches tall. Plus it'll be a couple extra inches with the feet on it. Well, uh, you could use just the feet uh, if you had a flat surface. My roof is curved, so that's one reason why I didn't want to use uh, just the feet. Plus, my RV roof does not have all the space to lay panels so low on the ground. You can see some of the vents. I'm actually going to have panels going over some of the vents. So these needed to be raised up high enough to get over those and allow the vents to still open. And the biggest reason for this particular height, which is 10 inches, is because it is the height of my air conditioning units. They, you can see they're about 10 inches high. And I wanted them to be as high as the air conditioning unit because I didn't want in whatever angle I would park my RV, I didn't want the air conditioner unit casting shade or a shadow onto the solar panels at any time. So I wanted them to be high enough up so that the only impedance would be like a tree or a building or something that, uh, that's not related to my RV. So you might be thinking, well, if it's just a little bit, how much of a difference can that make? Well, you can have like, you know, a shadow like this big or something like if your vent is up, you know, and just a little bit of that shadow is casting onto the solar panel, you know, and you got a pretty good sized panel, it can take away like 70% of your, your power output. So you don't want any shade, even a little teeny bit of shade, because it's amazing what just a tiny, tiny bit of shade can do for uh, bringing down your power. So that's why they are so high, and uh, that's why I have them at all. <laughs> I had to call in the assistance of my favorite former neighbor to help me get the panels from the ground up to the roof. That's the only part that I couldn't do alone. The grape solar panel is attached with a similar setup as I used for my roof mount. A nut, two washers, one for each side, and instead of a bolt with vinyl lining for tightening, it takes a spring washer or a lock washer. This is basically a ring with a break in it and each end splays out in opposite directions to push against the washer and nut, holding it tight from vibration and loosening. Once I got all the panels on, I tightened all the bolts from the top down. Then when everything was tight, I added on my end braces to finish up the whole setup and make it super stable. So one of the things I haven't yet gone over was why I decided to make the panels flat versus at an angle or even tiltable so I could change the angle that they're at. So ideally you do want them to be able to be tilted up, usually, well, if you're in the northern hemisphere towards the south. And depending on where you are in the world, they have charts that will show you the degree and angle which you want to use to ideally or, or to uh, maximize your uh, power output. 
but because I'm in an RV and I don't always know which way I'm going to be parking, I didn't want to make them tiltable because let's say I go through the trouble of making them tiltable and they only tilt, let's say, one way and just by chance it never happens that I would park in a way that that would be the right angle. So that's one reason why I was like, I'm just going to make them flat. And number two, it was kind of also much easier because I built the frame myself. I'm sure they've probably got frames uh, that you can buy for that and if you can do it yourself, more power to you. No pun intended. This is just the very beginning of the entire solar panel installation process. Stay tuned for more videos that are coming up for this whole process that are going to include great information such as multiple ways that you can hook these panels up or your panels, however many you have, to get you different amps and volts which may serve you in different situations, as well as uh, a few different ways to get your cables from up here down to your bin, whether you're going through your roof or elsewhere, and more information on other required items that you want to be installing in your whole solar setup, and just a ton more information, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching.